what it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs today in the studio, folks. As always, I got a real treat for you. It's Amber, and I would imagine Ibarra. That's correct. That's exactly how you pronounce it. Yeah. It's spelled, guys, Y B A R R A. So it, it could be something, but Ibarra. Yes. And by the way, if you want to find her or follow her, Amber Y. B A R R A Ibarra on Instagram. I would say, I would assume Google her and you can find her the rest of the way. You have a, a yeah, Amber Ibarra dot com too. Yep. Yeah. That's me. All right, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to like be here and having this conversation with you. I'm happy to take it wherever it goes and provide value how I can. Well, I appreciate it. So folks, Amber, award winning author, former pro curves model. What is a pro curves model? So first of all, Brad, before like this whole body empowerment thing was cool. I was actually signed with elite model management and worked New York, LA and Atlanta markets as a model, as a curves model, which means I'm over a size six, definitely not a double zero. And uh, I represented curves women. Gotcha. So um, woman in construction. Yes. What does that mean? You're, you work a construction job when you're not modeling for curves? <laughs> Um, I own a construction company that I've had for a decade now Dang. in South Texas. What do you build? We focus on fencing. Um, what's interesting about that is when I started this, when I was about 24, I was flipping houses. I was investing in property. I'd go to the auctions. I'd buy land, uh, buy properties. And I realized while I was working with contractors, especially in South Texas. So I'm from San Antonio, love my city. But the thing about San Antonio is it's kind of like that small town, big city feel. And what I came to realize was a lot of the contractors, sometimes they didn't show up. Sometimes they took your money and run. Sometimes you couldn't really find on Google who was actually reputable. So I thought, let's become the reputable contractor. And that's when I started a company with a business partner. Just solving problems, aren't you? Trying to. That, that blue ocean strategy, you know? Isn't that what an entrepreneur does? I think so. And then fencing specifically because the liability, you know, you're working outside the home. So I figured it makes sense. And it's needed. It's South Texas. Every company, commercial building, hotel, new apartment complex, house needs a privacy fence. So why not do that? It's simple. So, so explain this one to me. This one is crazy. You help entrepreneurs with your unique remodel, your method. What's that? That's your program or something? Uh, yeah. Remodel, much. remodel your method. Remodel you. Look, it's oh, remodel a fancy, you. yeah, it's, so it's remodel you. And that's actually like the thing with that is, Think of a house, right? So it's like a you, catchy you, title. It's a catchy title, pretty much. Remodel But it's you. to help I entrepreneurs like and business owners really just... Well, why entrepreneurs? Why not just... Why business entrepreneurs? Owners? Yeah. Because I'm passionate about entrepreneurs because that's how, what well, I've I, I can't say how old you are because you're a lady, so I'm not oh, supposed to... Oh, you totally ask. I'm, I love aging. How Aging's fantastic. I'm 35. 35 years old. So where were you when you were 18? When I was 18... Um, San I was Antonio. already two years out of high school. You did graduated at 16? I did. I got kicked out at 16. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I kicked myself out at 16. So it's, it's kind of the same thing. You graduated early. I did. I graduated early. took my first year of college in the same year. I pretty, I like literally took. So you were at college at 16? I was. What were all the college guys thinking that there's a little 16 year old running around campus? So it wasn't on a campus. It was the first year my high school introduced this idea of dual credits and taking college while you're in high school. And I remember my dad and mom saying, you're going to regret this. You're not going to graduate with like your original class. And all I could think was this just means I get to get out of my small town a freaking year earlier. Um, grew up in a super small town. How Most small? people know it. Um, the year I graduated 2015 should have graduated 2016, but I graduated early we had a parade for the opening of a super Walmart. That's how small. <laughs> how many, what's the population? Oh gosh, I wish I knew back then. I have no idea of the number of people, but it, it just, everyone knows everyone. 
very small town. We had one little theater, uh, mom and pop coffee shops. And what town was that called? <laughs> we can find its population. Huh? It's Uvalde. Uvalde. Is that California? Texas. Texas. Uvalde, Texas. Uvalde, it, Texas. Didn't something just happen there with that? It did. What was, what was it that just happened? Why is that name one in of the Texas biggest familiar? school shootings, actually. And that's why one of the teachers that passed away was actually my aunt. Oh, sorry to hear that. So, that's so, fine. so that's where Uvalde, Texas comes in. That is. Most so people you, know it from Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, because but you grew up there. I did. Just like there. running around as a little girl in Uvalde, Texas. Grew up on the West Side. I actually, my mom, when all this happened, um, I, I went to Rob Elementary School and I, you know, down the street on the west side of that my hometown from there that's where i'm from now how did you get into construction and and and, and just entrepreneurship like you were at high school then what um packed up graduation night and went straight to new york city so you moved from uvalde texas to new york city by yourself who'd you know there i had friends for modeling um i had started so Here's the thing. I didn't know that they were called mentors at the time, but an amazing woman named Larry Nelson. Larry? S her name. Yes. Her name was Larry Nelson. <laughs> is Larry Nelson. Why, why is that funny? Because well, in this time with the transgenderism oh, issues going yeah. on and this just chick's name's Larry. That's funny. Like if right now someone said, Biological hey, this, this lady female. wants a job here and she wants an interview. And I said, who is it? And, and they said, <laughs> Uh, her name's Larry. I, I'd say, <laughs> well, well, is it a dude? Biological female woman. Yeah. And her and name's Larry. That's the yeah. craziest thing and I've ever heard. Even crazier is she's in the fashion industry. And Do you, um, you still talk to Larry? She's, yes. She's in her probably 70s now. And wow. she still runs her business. I didn't know she was a, like. Was her name really Larry? L-A-R-I. Larry. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, that, that, that spelling is female. Let's keep going. <laughs> yes. Not. Yeah. Anyway. Like I got, a, I got a, I got a girlfriend, my first girlfriend, her name was Robert. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh my God. I almost fell for that. I was about to ask uh, you, really? Yeah. Her name's Robert. Oh my gosh. I was yeah. about to ask you, really? No, so not really. Larry finds me. So I, I grew up singing and I'm singing at this rodeo, the national anthem. Larry Nelson comes and is like, you're a ridiculously tall Hispanic woman. She's like, Latinas are not made to be five foot 10 because that's what I am. And she thought, I could help you with singing, but how cool would it be if you got into modeling? And um, I didn't know what that entailed. I had no idea what I was getting into. I started going in classes with her uh, and it was just, it was beautiful from there because she would pick me up from school and drive me to San Antonio three days a week. My parents couldn't afford it. So it was great because she just said, like literally my mom would clean her home in exchange for like these classes monthly that I'd go to for her because my parents weren't well off. And she took me under her wing and I just became her like protege. And I learned event production from her. I'd produce fashion week. Like at a young age, I was a judge at modeling competitions for pageants and she introduced me to this world that I never really thought of obviously at the moment I was so young um that would really have a big play on my life now which is entrepreneurship and being a creative that could actually do something with those tools and um I'm really yeah I'm really grateful for her and so this is basically the help business owners and entrepreneurs so they can match their income with their invaluable impact. Yes. That sounds like it's on supposed to be on the, on the back of a book or something. Like that sounds like I a mean, marketing person. Maybe it will that. be Brad. Maybe it will be. Did a marketing person write that? Or did you write that? Who wrote that? My team always gives me these. I don't know where they get the information from. I'm always thinking, did probably the person so, send this? Probably my website. I don't know. But, um, so do you help people match their income with their impact? What if, I, what I if, like to believe I do. And here's hold on real quick. Cause yeah. I'll forget if I don't interrupt, tell me match their income with their impact. Now this says it differently. This says match their income with their invaluable impact, but here's the match thing. your, hold on, hold on, match your income with your impact. 
Now, if everyone were to do that right now, mm -hmm. there'd be a lot of broke motherfuckers in the world. Seriously. You know why? Because there ain't, there ain't many people making an impact. True. They need to wake up. Huh? Here's the thing. How about that? Huh? I like it. Are Ball you dropping myself. bombs on yourself? I That's love right. it. Because it, it, there's so many people out there. It would be great if you could match their income with their impact because there's people that make money, but they're not making any impact. So if they match yeah. their income to their impact, well, then now they're screwed because they're not making an impact. And people need to think like, how can I make an impact? I love that. And here's, here's the thing. To me, it comes back to environment. First of all, I feel like I love to say that because I don't surround my people, myself with people that aren't making one. And- That aren't what? That aren't making one, that aren't making an impact. I love to say that because it matches where I'm at in you life right now. You don't have right any now, childhood friends? I, I do. Well, are they ma all making impacts? Yeah, and that so looks like the impact building capital a family. Of the world? I wouldn't go that far, but- Everybody you it. know and, and associate with is making an impact or you don't associate with them? That's hard to believe. No. Like if I go through your family, I'll bet you anything I meet a freaking douche ball. Oh, there's so many douche balls out there. Especially in mine. Like I, you meet I, my I family, you'd be like, dude, I can't believe you made it out of that mess. Now, again, that's part of my family. Yeah. I got same. all kinds of parts, don't we? We all do. We all do. And, and here's the thing. That's why I want to help people that are working to make that. Because if you're working to make an impact, that means you've set an intention to do so. How do you teach someone to make an impact, though? To me, it all comes down to this idea of like a fulfillment, this idea of assessing where are you now? Where do you want to go? And is what you're doing something positive in the world? Like whatever that looks like for you. We all, we all have places in, in the world, whether you're a creative, whether you're a business owner, whether you're the tactical strategic mind or you're the visionary and those are the people that, that I look to help and that I like to work with. And again, award-winning author, you won awards. You, your book was called Thriving into 30? Yeah, I wrote it at like 29, yeah. Why don't uh, everybody go pick up a copy of that? What's in, what's in there? What would they get when they open it? Does it teach people something? Yeah, it's uh, 30 chapters. Um, what's interesting that I loved about your book was you have this chapter, I forget what chapter it is, but it's about like, it talks about not being patient anymore. It's like you have no time to be patient and how patience isn't a, vir a virtue. And then one of my chapters, it's literally titled like patience is not a virtue because we have no time to just sit on our goals and our dreams. And so 30 chapters of my book is all about the lessons I've learned kind of the hard way too. And how I hope to help people with what I've been through and it's for women. And I, I wrote it because is it for women? It is. Well, that's a key thing. You just lost 70% of my listeners, but that's okay. No, oh, it's joking. okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. You know, what's funny. If you read my reviews, I have a 70 year old man that wrote in saying this book helped him. Let me so guess. Let me maybe guess. I just won them back, Brad, but, but let me guess Larry. No, what's his Larry's name? a woman. I know, but what's that dude's name? This. That is the great, that's the best question. You should find out and see if it's Larry. It's not. Larry. Well, that would be ironic that Larry's the one that got you here. And now Larry is, is, is being attracted. I know that it's not Larry though. Don't and by, know the, and by the way, Larry's though. real name, Lawrence, Larry's real name, Larry. See, Larry's aren't Larry's. They're Lawrence's. <laughs> Unless you're a woman, then it's L-A-R-I. I don't know where this is going, but I like it. I like the Larry conversation. It's going to be, it's going to make great content for short clips of this on you, on, on social media. I like the Larry conversation because for me, it goes back to mentorship and I didn't realize that's what I had when I was younger. And you had someone that just started for some reason, like helping something. you out. Yeah. Who saw something that, was in Larry. that I didn't see in myself. <laughs> That was Larry. <laughs> That's L -A -R -I. awesome. No, but I mean, L-A-R-I makes total sense. But I would, if I saw that, I'd pronounce it Larry. Why? Well, because, you know, it can't be Larry. <laughs> Lawrence is Larry. But, hey, listen, I know a guy or a girl by the name of Ryan. And to me, that's a dude's name. Yeah. But her name's uh, Ryan. And, you know, there's girls named Alex. Well, really, Alexandria. But anyway, Larry could be one. I just never heard Larry. Have you? Never. Have you seen? <laughs> I'm not alone. That's crazy. But anyway, 
the listeners mostly are obviously dudes. I think my demographic says I have like 30 something percent women. So if the books we need to raise that, if the, what we do need to raise that, I try to all the time, but Hey, I can't, you know, I can't, uh, all I can do is give out information. I, I can't get them to like it. You know what I'm saying? So the one that most girls like is when I said, if your girl outspends your income, you need to make more money. That's and dude, one. that was getting shared with all the husbands and all the boyfriends. Unless you're the girl making all the income. Hey, if you're, I, I, I got my own opinion about all these things. Like if yeah. you want to know, by the way, be, feel free to ask, make good, good episode material. But to me, if you're making all the money, then, 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 you know, you get to call all the shots. Why? Well, cause it's your money. And do you want that? That's a whole other I do. topic. Listen, I'm not a listen, relationship if I, expert. If my wife, but... if, so, if I could snap my fingers right now and change where my wife makes the money I make and, and I don't have to do shit, <laughs> would I snap my fingers and, 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 and make her in that position? hundred percent. Why? Well, just because Truly. I didn't have to do shit doesn't mean I wouldn't do shit, mm. but it, it would mean that we're twice as rich now. Cause now my wife is rich too. It would not bother me. I would not be uh, uh, worried that my wife was powerful or whatever. You know, a lot of a lot of times uh, they say men don't want powerful women. What do you think about that? I think that the question isn't presented in the right way because then when you get into power, that's more of an ego thing with men. I feel and are men and women different. Hundred percent. Women are from Venus, men are from Mars. What's what's the book? Come on. Isn't that weird you that Venus that. rhymes with penis? It should have been men are from mean, Venus. That's men why are they, from penis? Hold on. No, what? no, no. Venus rhymes with penis. So if it was men are from Mars, women are from Venus. It should have been women are from Mars and men are from Venus. And men are from Venus. And that's why it's called a penis. It's a penis that's from Venus. That's interesting. Either way, I still think that ego's in it. And you guys have jars. So you have jars from Mars. Oh my gosh. Are we going there? Uh, no, but I'm happy to go no, there. No, but I know if you have your, your, some of your buddies that are uh, women empowerment, they'll be like, what is yeah. this guy? Why'd you go on that dickhead show? Not a dickhead show. First of all, I think that you're full of substance. Okay. Uh, secondly, <laughs> what substance honestly, the question? honestly, hold on. I, I have to say one thing for the things that I've researched and read. I've read your book. I've done the things. You read the whole book? I did. I did. Can you tell I wrote it? I know it? the sacred six. Yeah, but can you tell I wrote it? Yeah, your your voice is in all of it. So don't tell me you didn't write it. Oh, I wrote it. Every I know you it. did. That's why people like, you know, if someone just says- Just like you talk now, it's in the book. You even are like, oh, and I'm digressing. Like your conversation, like you're in the book. Yeah, I, yeah. Dig I digress. You're like, I digress. By the way, I say that all the time. So like even that- those lines throughout the book, it's hilarious because it's like, of course, it's your voice. Yeah. But um, well, a lot of times people say they write a book and they don't. They get a ghostwriter to write the book. They put their name on it and then they say it's their book and they wrote it. But in the reality, they didn't write that book. They assisted in writing a book. I wrote okay. that book. You could tell you did. Yeah. And that's okay that they do that. Here's, here's the thing. And here's what I want to always be aligned with. The things that I create and that I put out in the world... I always want to do it with the intention of it representing who I am to my core. And a lot of the time I see people who have like seven and eight figures in the bank and they don't have a freaking eight figure relationships with themselves or anybody else or anyone else. I'll give you a little bomb dizzle on that one. That's true. Did I get a bomb? I'm so happy. You got I've one. lived for this moment. No, but truly it's, it's one of those things. And I love that you brought up like, the book too, because I didn't write a book just to freaking say that I'm an author now. No, that work was something that I was looking for. I was literally seeking any knowledge. I love my parents. They're super blue collar. I remember I was on a billboard as a model in Dallas, Texas. And I call my mom to tell her what had just happened. And her response, love you, mom, by the way, this is not to say anything mean, was, okay, great, but are you coming for the barbecue this weekend? Like, that's what they care about. My family's about family. They're about people and relationships. I could do the coolest shit in the world, and their question's going to be, but are you happy? And I love that because that's how I function and operate. I don't want to do things just to do them. I was a 28-year-old in an abusive relationship, 
going through a business divorce with a multi-million dollar company. And all I was looking for was a book that can help me make sure that I was setting my 30s up the right way. The right way is very relative. But there was nothing out there. And that's why I wrote the book. Because Vogue did something that was very kind of, I don't want to say cliche in a bad way, but, you know, eat the cake, travel to Italy. Cool. Love that. Where's the meat of trying to find ourselves in this crazy ride of life? There was nothing out there like it. That's why I wrote it. Are are you passionate that people find themselves? I am. What would finding yourself mean? What do you mean by that? To me, so it's a forever journey. And I think that, so a lot of what- It's not a forever journey. You're right. It's not. But while we yeah, are it's alive, just, it's a short journey. We are we are constantly doing that in our lives for as long as we are alive. But when you say trying to find ourselves, is there is there a is it is there is it somewhere lost and hidden for most people? I like that you brought that up because it really comes down to awareness. It's not even about finding ourselves. We know who we are. Do we? I think we do. I think we're discovering bits and pieces of us along the way because we're always evolving. Let me ask you this question. What do you think is harder to get knowing what you want or getting it? Knowing, knowing what you want, right. Or mm-hmm. getting it, which one's harder? I think knowing, cause you could get whatever you want if you know what you want. That's right. That is right. But see me and you are not the norm. We, we have knowledge or beliefs. One of the two different than most. How do we know? Well, cause again, why aren't most people entrepreneurs? Choose your heart. It's hard. Yeah, but we know that's why. That's why you can answer that question. You know what most people would answer? It's harder to figure out how to get it than it is figuring out what you want. Like what you want's easy. I know what I want. I want to be rich. I know what I want. I want a freaking hot wife and a bunch of kids. And you know, I know what I want. But do you? Do you really know what you want? Because learning what you want is harder than getting it. Yeah. Getting it is is fairly simple. If you ask me, like you just find someone who's already got it Mm -hmm. or done it or been there and you ask them, how did they do it? And then you emulate that. Yep. And then like action causes like result nine times out of 10, you're going to end up with the same thing. So it's pretty easy to get it. You just find someone who's got and do what they did. Yeah. But it's figuring out what it is, is the hard part. I would agree. And I don't feel like enough people have that kind of self-awareness because everything they do is dictated by other people and expectation. And am I going to look stupid? Like I have struggled so much in my teenage years with giving a fuck of what people thought about me. And that held me back for so long. And once I was free of that, I still struggle a little bit. I'm not going to act like it's all gone away, but it, it, freed me of so much. You know, I was a struggling artist. I was a singer painter. I moved into entrepreneurship. I wanted to make something of myself and I did it unapologetically. And it felt good to do that because if I failed, that's on me. But at least I was going after something I knew I wanted versus what I thought other people thought that I could do or be. Hmm. I don't think enough people do that. Now, how do you spend your day? Like what do you, when you wake up, like what do you do all day? How do you make money? Your, your fence company or your construct, it's not construction company unless you're building buildings. That's what I thought. I was doing that. But, but you are constructing fences, so it's construction, but you, you mainly focus on fences. No. How do you make money every day? I'm a coach and I sell products and I'm a keynote speaker and I've built a great team for my construction company. Actually, I'll even share this now. I just had an epiphany a week ago. <laughs> I've had my construction company a decade and it's my baby. I, 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 I built it from the ground up from nothing. I even had to dissolve a company with a partner to start my own thing over again. And I made it successful. And I just realized like I'm working to exit that company because I didn't, you know, talking about self-awareness earlier, 
the construction company is my backup plan. And I don't need a backup plan anymore. What I'm doing, I know I'm meant to do. And so when you ask me, how do I make my money? I'm coaching and working with Fortune 500 companies and C-suite execs. I'm speaking on stages. I'm helping that? people like I want to. And all of it came from everything I, I've learned building a business from the ground up and starting from nothing and doing it two times over. Do you enjoy speaking? I love it. I love it so much. The bigger the crowd, the better? No, not necessarily. No? The right people. Like if I'm in the me, right to, room. To me, I don't care. Like if I walk out and there's 30,000 people, that feels better than I walk out and there's 13 people and two of them ain't looking at you. They're on their phone while you're talking. If you're talking in the right room and there's 15 people that are your ideal client. You, they, if there's only 15 people, it's probably not the right room. Well, maybe it is. Well, then you wouldn't be doing a keynote. No, well, there, I've never seen a keynote in front of 15 people. No, but here, so here's something I learned. <laughs> if you're doing a keynote in front of 15 people, no. you're probably auditioning. There's a thing called, <laughs> there's a thing called OPS that, um, I, by the way, I've been fortunate enough, um, to be on your friend, Grant Cardone's, I made top 10 as a speaker for a new show that hopefully someone picks up and they have coming out which I could talk about called the great American speak off. And I got to work with Pete Vargas and, um, their, their whole 10 X team. How'd you do? I mean, top 10. Well, Pete Vargas, you know how that whole thing got started, right? Actually, I don't know the backstory. Well, the backstory is Pete Vargas. I said, dude, you know, he's doing his thing. And I said, and he said, dude, how do you get me to grant? And I said, well, why would I get you to grant? And he says, dude, because if I get on a stage, I'll sell so many of these and da, 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 and I'll cut you in and da, 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 da. So I said, okay. So I, call Grant. Hey, Grant, dude, you need to pay attention to what's going on here because like literally what he's doing was called advance your reach. Yeah. What he's doing like out there is legit. And, and if he, like all the entrepreneurs, the 10 X conference, probably, you know, a lot of them need this and you call it like 10 X stages or, you know, call it whatever the hell you want to call it, but you want to get with Pete. And so now there's a product <laughs> of Pete. Yeah, I, I know. I, but see, I, look, look I'm training. involved and you're in that whole that, ripple effect. That is so great. No, I, I love that. And by the way, I totally dropped your name um, because I, I had a 10 minute conversation with Grant. Um, they they chose one person out of thousands and I got to gotta have a convo with him. And um, really, like I spent four months did he say, yeah, through this yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. How did you know that? Yeah, he did. He was like, yeah, uh -huh, for sure. Not that I'm trying to, you know imitate him but uh all that to say i yeah i don't even know what my point was other than that experience was amazing no you were you were demonstrating that hey you know out of all those you're you were picked as the top one or one that you've selected i, did, as I one didn't of the make few. top four though because those top four got to speak at his event 10X. that he has here his growth con i was so i was so freaking close though who who won do you know their names I don't know all of their names. I, got to speak? I, I worked with them. What, what do they speak about? Uh, it varies from motivation to adding business value. So there were, there was a mix of people. Do you know that, do you know that like when Grant has people on the stage, it's, it's either to, uh, draw you there like Trump and, and these big names he gets mm -hmm. or it's to sell you something. Oh, for sure. So usually like when, when you go on his stage, he, he wants you to sell something. Oh, hundred percent. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not usually educate them. It's mm -hmm. sell them. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a whole art to speaking on stage. I think that's where we're going with it too, is, um, I talked about 15 people in the room. So. Yeah, but they're speaking Pete on stage about, and then they're selling from stage. Exactly. And all of it's based on OPS, other people's stages. This is a stage right now. 100%. percent on one, your stage. Big one. Monster stage. The biggest stage. One of the biggest. Not the biggest. I know several that are bigger. But, you know, like Joe Rogan, shit, there's a stage. But, yeah, this is definitely a stage. You are right. It's a stage. So is, so is 10X. So is any event you go to. And, by the way, if there's only 15 people in the room, it's still a stage. And That's if you're point. selling from stage, you know, which is good, you're, 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 you're pitching uh, – one to many instead of one to one. Yeah. And so your, your revenue skyrockets. Yeah. See, I didn't, when I was on all the 10 X stages, I didn't, I wasn't selling anything. I wasn't smart enough back then to think and go, wow, but I, you get were. It. I should be using this stage 
to get this, that, 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 that. But I didn't. I was out there believing that I just needed to give them some values, teach them some mm. shit. I never sold anything. There's a structure to it. I know. There's a definite structure to it. Is that what Pete's teaching you? The 10 X stages? Oh, totally. Yeah. I, I Dude, went they're through good at their it. program. Oh, they're, they're so good at it. And it helped me. I've, you know, you, I closed. You, did you create your story for, with Pat? Of course I did. Pat Quinn's the best. Yeah. I love that guy. See, uh, he I, made, he, I went through that whole thing. Um, he made me one, but like, I don't do this. Mm. I try to freaking have a signature talk and, and it's like, you know, yeah, a few people were crying and this and that, but Nobody was hooting and hollering and having fun and throwing babies when I was done. I was. It was, it was always, it was always this, you know, well, you never heard me do it because I never of did it. I've heard you talk on stage. That's, that's how I saw you. But that's you. not me doing their thing. Oh, gotcha. They create signature talks where it starts out a particular way. And every time you see it, it'll, it'll go that way. Mm. Like mine was, you know, I forget how I started it, but it was, I'm silent. And then I make this statement that it, somewhat alarms people and then <laughs> I'll say this and then I'll paint a picture and tell the story and I'm like see I don't I ain't doing that I don't do that now if I was selling a product and I wanted to consistently sell that product I should do it yeah. but I say I wasn't selling anything so I thought it felt weird because I don't need to be that rehearsed what do I need to do I need to go out there and just talk and so that's what you heard me do is talk because that's all I ever do I love that you know you, you know I just got back from doing a keynote um in front of like a couple thousand people coaching con and I, and I literally, Jen was there. this was two days ago. Was she? Yeah. Um, I walked out on stage and I said, you know, when I see pregnant ladies, I think to myself, they've been fucking <laughs> now. Why? Who says that? Nobody, <laughs> but the whole crowd started laughing. Right. Which sets the tone. Yeah. And then ultimately I said, because I'm deductive, like, I, you know, I have deductive reasoning. I have common sense. Now you guys are coming here to grow your business. So I'm going to cover some things that are kind of through deductive reasoning. You can come to the conclusion that I am correct. So like I used it as the, as a thing. So now to call it back, as I was talking, I'd be like, you know, she must've been fucking, which meant pretty <laughs> obvious, isn't it? So I equated it to pretty obvious, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But now what's funny is I get text over and over and over from people that were there and DM'd. I just saw a pregnant lady. <laughs> now, what are they really saying? They're saying, I, I just saw some chick that I'm thinking now I must know, have been humping. Husband. So literally yeah. I got people thinking about humping all day. Every time they see a pregnant lady, they're going to be thinking that trash, which is not necessarily the influence I wanted to have on the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go to my next event, which will come up here uh, in Salt Lake, I, I'm not going to, well, I might, because it was so good. And it was so funny. But what if it doesn't work at that stage? It was just natural is my point. No, yeah. It's, it just came out. Like, I, I didn't think, natural. I'm going to say pregnant ladies remind me of humping. Like, I'm not going to say that. Like, when I walked <laughs> up on stage, earlier I was talking to my buddy who, where we were driving around, and I actually said that out of something completely different. And he said, I dare you to open your speech, <laughs> speech that way. And then I was joking. And then the guy that puts on the convention came into the green room and he said, Hey, tell him how you're going to start your speech thinking it's a total joke. And then I said, he thinks I should say this. And then the owner of the place said, you should. And I said, shut up. He goes, dude, I dare you. You wouldn't dare. <laughs> I said, Oh, I dare. <laughs> he said, I dare you. So but, I did it. But that's who you are. Yeah. That's who I am. Yeah. So this is what I love about it though. Even working with people like that, the structure and start with the story and bring them into the moment. The head, that's the great, heart, the hands, you know, that whole thing. Three braid framework. But dude, that's also very true. If you're it selling true. though, I would say they are hundred percent right. Here's what we get to do though. When we're working with people like that, to me, I'm, I'm going to take it and like everything else, including content, make it my own. I'm not going to follow you to, you know, follow it to the T and make this, you know, structured to the word memorized thing because that's not who I am I, I have an idea I have some points that I want to hit I set the intention but then I walk in the room and I fucking read the room and that's what you got to do and that's I, what I, I think some agree. of the best speakers in the world do you agreed know, that's what they but do. if you but if you go listen to a lot of these what I call speakers like a, I'm not a speaker but you kind of are well I mean again you can claim I'm a speaker I did you know over I don't know how many 
speeches last year, but, mm-hmm. but a lot. Yeah. So you, you call me a speaker, but I'm not a speaker per se. Cause to me, a speaker is if you see me on Monday and then you see me on Wednesday, mm-hmm. it was the same speech. Mm-hmm. And then if you saw me on Friday, you'd be like, okay, I've seen this. Like it's the same pauses. Like I start out. Would it surprise you to know that exactly three of every people, you know, and then you come to the next one. That's why I start. Next one. That's why I start. That's a speech. Mm-hmm. Most of them are doing that. The good ones, the professionals. Do you know why? Because if I saw you at an event, yeah, if I saw you at an event and I'm like, oh, I love this message. I want you to share it with my group. And then I hire you and you go over there and you don't say anything close to the same. Like what the, f- so literally if you want to be a professional speaker, speaker, mm-hmm. like a real speaker, speaker, you need to create signature talks. Yeah. And that's what they do. Mm-hmm. They give you a signature talk and then they infuse how to sell with it. But the signature talk in my mind is your story. Same. You know what I'm saying? But if your story and your, and your product that they're tying together isn't really that exciting, well then how exciting can your signature talk be? So I don't, I didn't like it because mine was on training because light speed was what I'd tried to be selling from stage. Yeah. I'm like, dude, now I got to talk about, you know, training and why is it so important? How did it touch my heart? And it's like, can I ask you a question? Speaking of stories, is that okay? Yeah. How has your story like shaped you to now? I know it's a very like loaded question, but from where you came from to what you've built with your company yeah. and this podcast, yeah. like how did you reshape that story? Cause you could have easily, I didn't reshape the story. The story is the same. Or how it's did you reframe it? it? How did you reframe it in your mind? I misspoke, not reshaped it. How, how did you reframe it in your mind to make yourself get up, do the work and like be where you are? Well, again, I didn't, I didn't really do that. Um, I think I just keep learning every day. Okay. And keep adjusting every day. So again, I mean like I should already be a billionaire a hundred percent, but man, I was an idiot. So, so if I could reshape it, well, then I wouldn't have been an idiot, which would make me a billionaire right now, which you can't do that. So you can't reshape it. You just have to learn from it. But what I learned is it doesn't matter what people think. And it also 90% of the time is incorrect. What people think. Yeah. So like 90% of the time when people are telling you something that they believe it's bullshit. It's not true. It's, their it's not true. Yeah. It's not true just because they believe it. It, it, it. It's only, it's only true if it's true. Like if I said to you, you know, um, that tree is beautiful. That's not the truth. The truth is, is you get to determine if that tree is beautiful. So I can't say the tree is beautiful. That's not the truth. Maybe my truth, but it might not be. What if you think it's ugly? Then is it true? It's about what no, we believe. No, so how can it be true and untrue at the same time? Well, because it's that's called perception, which means yeah. it's not the truth. The truth is the same no matter what angle you're coming at it from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all comes down to your beliefs, your perception the value that we give to things. Yeah. Is. But I think you were kind of asking, you know, what did you, how did you reshape? You were saying in a way, what did you learn? I thought at least what did I learn? I learned that most of what we are taught is incorrect and limiting. Yeah. So literally if you want to learn what you need to learn, figure out what you need to unlearn. To me, it's like the old story of, you know, two sons, they have a dad, the dad's an alcoholic. One son's perspective is, you know, well, I'm an alcoholic because I saw my dad drinking every day. And the other son's perspective is, well, I don't drink at all because I saw the same thing. And so I guess to me, the question for you came from the idea of, at least from your book and what I know of you, you know, we both came from a place of like very humble beginnings, wouldn't say poverty, but um, you somehow took your hand and played it in a way that has brought you here. Yes. And so yes, I that's have. more of where my question comes from. What? Because how, how did I do it or that I did it? What was your question? I, I guess it was just very broad in general. Like I, I just, I, I guess more so I'm commending the fact that you weren't, you know, given a, a freaking silver spoon and, and you, you beat the odds, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You learned the hard way. Not that I'm trying to. And so will everybody else if they don't buy the book. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but again, I don't care if they buy the books. I don't make 
like I, I think I get a dollar or some stupid shit. Maybe Same, two. but but it's know. still our work that's out there. Yeah, but I mean, I wrote it because I said I would, and I got to do what I said I'm going to do. Like you know, people ask me now. There's people wanting to do a book deal with me, like Wiley and like real. Are you doing um, it? No, because like number one, I'm not sure what it is that they do. All they're going to do is advance me some money. I don't need any money. You yeah. know, they're not going to they're not going to like put me in all the Barnes and Nobles where I can't do that, but they can. Well, then that's why I'd get them. I can't justify why they would get all the money. Yeah. I like that. Well, it just makes no sense. Like, what are they going to do for me? I think most people take book deals because. The upfront money. Th- yeah. The yeah, upfront I don't money. Need and, and, and I don't also need the upfront money. To be on lists. What could it be the upfront New York money? Time million dollars? I mean. You know what you're supposed to do with that upfront money if you're smart? Reinvest it. Market the book with it. Yeah. So basically they hand you $500,000 advance. You go spend $500,000 promoting the book and hope that, that it worked. Why? Because if you didn't sell X amount of copies, they're not giving you another advance and no one else will ever again. But if you sell the shit out of those books, well, then the next book deal is coming down the pipe. But what are you getting upfront money? But this time, instead of a half million, you're getting four million because they have some background like, oh, this bitch going to sell some books. Back to intention, back to why are you doing what you're doing and where is your focus at? So, I mean, so. When it comes to you and you're like, you know, now I'm loving coaching people. What are you teaching them? Like, how do you like, tell me how to wh- wh- like, is it based on the person you got to wait and meet them before you can determine how to help them or are there steps you've developed? No, there's steps that I've developed. Um, so like remodel you for instance is all about the model. You have your current model and what you function in. And we assess that you have your real model, which is, your who do you look up to? Who's, you know, let's, let's study the companies that you want to be like, let's, let's look into who the role model is. And then, and then we remodel and that's Which the implementation. Bi- yeah. Part. Build it out. Yeah. That's, that's the business mapping. That's the, Oh, you're telling me that great. You have a $5 million company, but nothing's changed and you feel stuck because your teams aren't coordinating the way they should be. So you can sense it, but you don't know how to fix it. Yeah. So it's, it's getting into the details of that. And then to how be honest. How do you honest, know how to fix it though? Do you just walk in and miraculously fix all of their problems? Brad, I have a magic wand. Don't you know? <laughs> no, of course not. It, it, it takes, it takes time and, and, and it takes someone wanting to, and someone being self-aware enough to know that like, Hey, there is something that I can't see that I need to bring someone from the outside into my business for. Um, but really what it is at the end of the day is it all comes down to fulfillment, like, and, and that may seem far-fetched, but that's really what it is because I have people come to me that are like, Amber, I just want to be happy. I'm running this business and like, I just want to be happy with my life. And I'm like, no, you fucking don't. Because if we were happy all the time, that'd be boring as shit because then we wouldn't know how to, we wouldn't have this desire to want to like next level our life in our business because then we go through things, we learn the lesson, right? And then we like, shift ourselves and our mindset and our life to try to hit something even greater. So it's like, how can I create an environment that helps me sustain a fulfilling life? And that's what it comes down to. The money, the money's cool. Yeah. But happiness is a fleeting emotion. And I would even argue to say that it wouldn't keep you happy. It would make you happy for a moment. What would? The marker that you're finding, setting finding yourself joy? for success. <laughs> what do you mean? Hitting, so for instance. What, what is the, the definition of happiness for me is success. Meaning, meaning that is when you know you're succeeded, when you're happy. So, okay. So you're happy. You say you hit the, the billion dollar marker that you want to. And yep. And I'm happy. How great does that feel? How long does the happiness last? Forever. Does it? Sure. Don't you have this next level because of happiness, happiness? No, happiness is a choice. Well, happiness so are is you a happy, choice. Like, are you happy right now? I'm you're, fulfilled right now. But you're, che- you're not happy right now? I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. But see, you're choosing to be happy because you could also be pissed. True. There's people that are pissed in the same situation as someone else that's happy. Well, what's the difference? If it was, if it was one's the other, then there would be no choice in the matter. Like, oh, you're, you're, you're upset. Everyone's going to be upset now. 
everyone has to be upset right now. Well, no, some people are like, I don't have to be upset. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's a choice. So is happiness a choice. is a choice. Yeah. So I'd want perpetual happiness. Like when you said, nobody wants to be happy forever. It'd be boring. No, not for me. Shit. That's all I'm looking for is perpetual happiness. And you're like, the well, don't you choose flows. it? Yes. Huh? The ebbs and flows though of life. It's, yeah, but you, the, you the reason to, why the reason why people the are getting unhappy, things. people, but the reason why people get unhappy is because things happen that they're out of their control or or within their control that they don't like. Yeah, and that's what it is. Like, why do you become unhappy? Like, I'm happy as shit, and then all of a sudden, dickhead showed up and you know ruined everything. Well, why did dickhead showing up make me unhappy? Ultimately, because hmm. I stopped being happy because I chose to be upset. Because yeah. you can't make me happy, can you? No. Yeah. You can't make that's me happy. an internal job for yourself. Exactly. Only you can make yourself happy. So I'd, I'd just argue that I would want to be happy perpetually. I like that. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, I am to tell you the truth. I mean, I could tell you're, you've been smiling this whole freaking time. I, I, I love your energy. It's well, that's great. because dude, listen, it, it, in the very, well, I don't know how long ago, but in the beginning, let's just say mm. I stumbled across a very, I think life changing belief. And that is called gratitude. You see, when I wake up, I realize there's no amount of money that I would take not to have done what I just did. So literally yeah. every single day I wake up and the first thing I think about is extreme gratitude to even get the fucking day. Yeah. So that shifts like my that. perspective automatically. Like no amount of money would have, would have said, okay, well I'll give you 50 million if you don't wake up. Nope. So you mean waking up's worth more than 50 mil? worth more than a hundred mil. Some people say, no, I'll take the hundred mil, give it to my family. I won't wake up anymore. Well, yeah, you're probably 94 years old and you only got another fucking week left. So, I mean, at the end oh of the day, God. well, yeah. again, do people die in 94? No, I know. Like if, you, if someone's it's listening real. to this and you're 94, you know, love you, brother. Hope everything goes well, but you know, we'll be seeing you soon. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to live longer just because I'm not 94. Why? Yeah. Cause I can get hit by a bus on the way home. Yeah. Like I had this one kid one time tell me this, you know, now that you're 54, cause I'm 54, they, and he's 17. He's on this little Q and a thing. And he goes, now that you're basically, he said, now that you're, you know, most of your life's over, you know, da, 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 da. And I, and I said, bro, your life might be fucking over. Like you're, you're yeah, worried about true. me and my, my urgency. And you're sitting there slacking like a fucking retard because you think you got your whole life. Your whole life could be another year. My life, my, the rest of my life could be 30 years, which means, dude, even yeah. though I'm 54, I'm living way longer yeah. than your dumb ass is going to. No, totally get it. Dude, he, he was a smart enough kid to go, oh, I never really, see, that's the shift I'm talking about. Yeah. The mindset shift that goes, wow, like the day's going to be great no matter what, because, because I'm, I'm alive. I'm going to choose The question is, be. is how much greater can it get? Not whether or not it's good. It's good, man. Did you open your eyes? Are you breathing? Mm. Let's go. Then it's good. Now, again, I'm talking about able body. If I woke up and I was in a sling and I was a vegetable and I couldn't talk, but I could only think and I was trapped in my mind and like, you know, my body wouldn't move. I was paralyzed. There was an accident. Like what all those circumstances to me, guys, those are the exceptions. I'm not talking yeah. about everything. Single situation would would be true. But in general, Labeled, you know, yeah. you wake up, you're pretty healthy. You can, you can get up, you can read, you have a phone, you know, you have a home. Like, well, I don't have a home. I'm homeless. Get a fucking home. There's a way to get a home. I was homeless in Seattle or in, uh, in LA once. And someone asked me on an interview, you know, well, what did I do? And I mm. said, I just started looking for a chick with a home. Mm. Yes. And if I, if I had the button, I would, I would totally press it for you. Right I know, now, but right? everybody's like, no, 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 no. So you're going to use people. Yes. Intelligent societies use one another. Okay. We leverage, you, you can call it use. I call it leverage. leverage yeah. You know, I need a home. I don't have one. Is it easier for me to find a buddy and see if I can crash at his house or find a chick that wants me to crash at her house? Well, in that particular case, it was the <laughs> latter. Okay. So I found a chick that let me crash her house. Guess what? I'm not homeless anymore, but I got a whole new set of problems now. Why? Well, cause now, you know, you, you better not mess around or maybe she won't let you live there. So now you're <laughs> back to homeless. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like all these choices that come down through the life of one's life yeah. is what determines the value of their life. So the, basically the choices that you make 100%. will determine the road that you take. Hundred percent. Should I add a motherfucker or without Mother ruining it? Oh yeah, no, yeah. Because I could have said motherfucker. I think, but just, then it would have ruined it. it. Yeah. 
See, a lot of people say, Brad, if you just quit cussing, you're, you, you'd you have a lot more followers, which may be true. Because mm. there's some people that have heard something like, oh, I can't forward this to my friend. I would have if he didn't drop that F-bomb. F-bomb. But yeah. to me, it's like, guys, everybody realizes those are just words, right? Like they're just words. And who gives the words meaning? You. We do. Because the word fuck is actually fornication under consent of the king. That was the stamp that you would get when, when you were approved to have children because you had to ask permission. So when you were allowed to have children, F-U-C-K was fornication under consent of the king. These guys were allowed to have children and then their paperwork was stamped fuck. You should say it more often on the podcast. Yeah, but when someone says fuck, you think, oh, that's heavy. Why? Because we all decided that that's a bad word. You want your kid walking around saying, what the fuck, mom? <laughs> I wouldn't. Why? Well, because society will treat them differently. Different. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want society to treat them differently. But if my kid walked around and said, fuck, this bitch came over here the other day and started <laughs> fucking talking shit. I reached over and smacked that bitch in the fucking head and shut her up. And, you know, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Like, those are just words to me. Fine. Yeah. You're trying to tell a story. You're, you're choosing some colorful words. I'm I mean, good and, with it. And like, you've, you've are already you? built the business. Are you? You've built the business. You've built a reputation. So like fuck coming from you and on a podcast like it's it's an expression to me it's hey, hey but you just mentioned a good point you said but you already built a business and it's already expected it's funny because people always ask me you know how do i get away with it and i'm like what do you mean and they're like well i you know i got a lot of christian um customers mm -hmm. so do i yeah you know, I but, do too. but so, so how do I you, how do you get also. away with it? Well, cause dude, just because you believe in some religion or, or, or if you have faith doesn't mean, uh, that you're an idiot. Yeah. Cause you'd have to be an idiot or incompetent. Well, I think people that because. are like offended by words, they're not yeah. that bright. Like how, 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 why are you offended by words? <laughs> Especially those like, words. To me, it don't Have matter. you not said that in your own home before? I'm pretty sure it's come out a few times. What? So, fuck. In my home, I had. No, I have. no. I, I'm saying the oh, people the that listeners. are offended by that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. have you really not said that behind closed doors? You can't. They probably me. have, and even if they haven't, like, no, I haven't. <laughs> well, then maybe you were raised properly, and you didn't have all the issues I had. Like, you know, I wish I was perfect. But I'm not. No, you don't. And I can't be. So guess what? There's no such thing as perfect person. No. Okay. And, there's and if no there such was, thing there was supposedly only one. Okay. Well, guess what? I ain't him. I can promise you that. <laughs> okay. Just but, like there's no. But like, if I was around seven year olds, like if this whole group was seven year olds, I wouldn't, you know, say fuck over and over with seven year olds in the room. Why? Well, again, use your fucking head. Yeah. Well, you, you know your audience. Well, just use You're your head. You're not talking to seven year olds. This might someone, I'll, I'll try this dropping bombs nonsense I keep hearing about. Let me listen to one of these episodes. And then they listen to this one. It's like, oh Lord, listen to his mouth. Forgive him. I, I'll never listen again. Yeah. I guarantee you guys, cuss words are not offending any deity in the world. Why? Because that's our language. We made it up. We made up its meaning. It's not, it's, it's nothing. Question for the listeners in mind. I, you know, I love to go to events. I don't just like to speak on stages because I'm trying to gloat about myself and what I teach. I, I, I do it because a lot of the people that I've gone to see and watch, there's none they've of, there's, changed there's my life. There's not even a little of that? I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, there's a little pinch, but um, like they've changed my life. Uh, but for people that listen to, to Dropping Bombs and what you have to say, I feel, and I know because I'm one of those listeners, it's like, when you've reached the level of what you've built, um, and I'm sure you still have so much more to go and there are things that you want and desire, and I love that. That's 100%. I, the, to me, the question, though, that I'd love to ask you since I have this time with you is, what is the vision now? You've built so much. Mm. You have a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. You have a happy, awesome, like you're so transparent with your family life. you talking life. about my wife, Robert? <laughs> Larry, actually, I'm talking about Larry. No, I'm kidding. Um, like, what is success or happiness, right? Because we talked about happiness and fulfillment. Yeah. What does that look like for you right now with everything you've already done? I'm well, again, believe it or not, it's impact. If you want to 
talk about the truth. It's impact. I like it. I already have money and I, and I can stop right now and not need necessarily money. Yeah. Now again, I'm not buying islands yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to work if I don't want to work, yeah. um, forever again. But my goal was to get other people in that condition. Mm. So, so what's next is creating opportunities and avenues for the average person to start making three to $500,000 a year. Because I think that's where life kind of begins. If you're not making three to $500,000 a year, you, you, I'm not saying you can't live on that. My kids yeah. live on it. Some of these employees here live on it. Like, of course people can live on it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I'm talking about really living, you know, enjoying yeah. life, being happy, having enough, having enough, you mm -hmm. know, well, it's not enough. Well, again, you're yeah. making 60,000 a year, 80,000 a year, dude. I don't know how the fuck you're living. <laughs> Yeah. Honestly, like what kind of car you drive? Shit, shit box where you live. Shitty part of town, shitty ass neighborhood, shitty ass apartment. Like that ain't living. Yeah. You know, you, you want to wake up and feel inspired by your surroundings. You want to wake up in a bedroom that if you could close your eyes and pick it, it's that one. Why can't you sleep in a bedroom that you dream about? You can. Of course you can, but people aren't doing it. So when you say what's next for me, I'm going to show people how to make three to 500 K because to me, if I make if I show you how to make three to $500,000 a year and that's the beginning, that's the basis from there. You either grow with me mm -hmm. and continue to grow into the, you know, seven, eight, nine figures yeah. or, or you fall away. And again, so I'm just going to, I'm looking for people that are swimming towards me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go help a million people make a million dollars, but it's the one swimming towards me. And it oh, starts yeah. with three to five hundred thousand dollars. That's why I started these companies I just started recently. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was teaching people how to close, sell, persuade. Because mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta sell somebody something if you're gonna yeah. make money. I guarantee sure. you I don't know anybody successful. I don't know anybody successful that isn't selling somebody something. Hundred percent. Okay, so you gotta sell something, right? And you gotta okay. get really good at selling something. Yeah. So I used to just say that. Right. That was my thing. And, and people would buy the training and, you know, I'd help all the people get better at sales. And, but I don't know what happened after that. It doesn't feel as good. Mm. Now I, now I'm saying, okay, I'll even show you and hire you at the company that you'll make three to 500,000. So I started the companies to give the jobs to all wow. these people, but they're not companies per se. I mean, mm. they are, but, but they're like, for example, I don't know if you know this, but more millionaires have been created selling financial services, insurance, shit like that. Yeah. Than any other industry. So it's not that difficult to make three to 500,000 selling insurance, mm. IULs, things like this. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. Now, again, is it work? Well, hell yeah, it's work, dude. You ain't just going to sit there and make a half mil, but you, but, but if you're willing to work, and I'm assuming you are, because if you're not willing to work, dude, let's stop. You don't need a job right now. You need trained. You need educated. You need freaking, you need a mindset shift. <laughs> right. You need shifted because at the end of the day, dude, it's going to take work. So yeah. if you, if you bought into my program thinking this wasn't going to be work, you're stupid. Yeah. But at the end of the day, teach you to sell. Now I want to go a step further, give you the vehicle to sell with and in. So, so I'm setting up these companies. So that's yeah. the future, the next three to five years. Yeah. And then I would say in five years, I will be almost 60 and I am going to sell everything I own mm. and psh, it sounds like some right Dr. Off, Wayne Dyer stuff right off into the sunset. Okay. Now again, I'll still be a social media icon. Why? Well, cause you know, that's fun. And not only that, it's easy for me to do because my social media is just me being me and you know, people are filming it and chopping mm. it up. So, I mean, I'll still live. It's just my lifestyle will be a lot l different. You know, I won't always be, you know, at my desk, like you see in a lot of my clips. Now you'll see me on the beach. You'll see me mm. on the boat. You, you, <laughs> you'll see me buying the car and, and, and traveling to Italy. You'll just see me doing other things, but you'll still see me. And that's where the impact comes and that, in. And that, by the way, is, is when I'm done. No, the impact is in the next three to five. I want to, I want to help a lot of people make, you know, get out of the rat race. Now, by the way, doing that will make me ridiculous amounts of money. Oh yeah. And it, like into the B word. Yeah. And then I sell all my companies and assets because a lot of people don't know, but I own multiple companies, not just yeah, Lightspeed. For sure. Um, I sell them all because there's equity, a lot of an equity yep. in all of them. Plus, 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 plus the, 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 that's what's been developed till mm -hmm. then. Psh, I guarantee you, number one, I'll be a billionaire. 
and I'll be riding off in the sunset, a billionaire, <laughs> all svelte, right? I'm going to freaking make sure I stay on my regimens and, 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 and constantly look for the way to stay young and fresh. Oh, and I then see. at 60 years old, get my billy and just right off into the sunset. What's your plan? Man, I, I love where I'm at right now. First of all, I've taken my five-year plan and I'm working to do it in one because a lot of the things I'm doing, I, I've let go of the idea that I have to like do it perfectly. And I know maybe you have some progress. I know it does. And that's why I've been taking massive and perfect action. And, and all I want to do is speak on more stages. I want to help the Amber that I was five years ago when I was going through a business divorce and had to freaking start from scratch to build up my third company. And I want to help that person. So the impact's already happening. Now it's about scaling that impact. I want to write more books. I want to, I, I'm going to do so many things. I'm going to retire my parents. I'm going to, I'm going to do something that matters and I'm going to do it all with integrity and with like now here's my, fucking passion now because here's my only question. I'm not just chasing the money and it's more than that. So, so. Here, so here's my only question. Yeah. Why haven't you done that sooner? It's too many lessons that I had to learn and I love that I did because. Uh, uh, yeah, but watch because there's lessons in this. Yeah. That is correct. You didn't because you didn't know how. That's true. Or you said it another way. I, I had lessons to learn. Whatever, you didn't know how, or otherwise nope. you already would have done this. Oh, yeah. Everybody got to understand that. So if you're not where you want to be in life, it's just because you don't know something you need to know. So should you be seeking information and counsel and mentorship, or should you be hiding from it? You need to seek it. And also, to me, the biggest thing is being in the right rooms with the right people. Proximity. Proximity. Thousand percent. This last year, this last year, I was in probably five high ticket masterminds. And let me tell you, it's changed my fucking life. And all the ideas I'm visionary, all the ideas that I've had in the different partnerships that I'm, I, I'm with and working on, I'm, I'm getting freaking 50 X done. Well, dude, there's going to be some people from the bomb squad that are going to probably reach out to you because they like the way you said something or, you know, they, they too, you know, went through with what you're talking about. And I'm sure you're going to get some biz from the bomb squad, which is again, the idea, isn't it? You know, yeah. get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. Yes. Let's go. And your book's very similar, even though it's not called the hard, hard way. It's the premise is the hard way. Yeah. And by the way, I think a lot of books are that premise because when you read right. things, you know, a lot of people, are trying to teach you something in their book, at least the self-help ones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always look at, did this go, like, what's their journey? What happened to them to where this, this is passionate about it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. it should be, and it should be, if we can help other people avoid the mistakes we had to make, wouldn't they accelerate their ability to succeed? Thousand percent. And wouldn't that make us Happier? number one good people and better off? Ultimately, better off. Yeah. If right now I could totally. snap my fingers and everyone on the United States planet or not uh, uh, planet territories, let alone the planet, automatically started making 250 a year, mm -hmm. like literally. Now, I, there, there's going to be some financial expert that tells me I'm wrong. But in theory, if everyone made a bunch of more money, wouldn't everybody like what if the lower what if the lower income was quarter million here? But again, not inflation and crazy where that still made you poor, like what we call poor now. Poor to me is without. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 hey, why don't you wear better shoes? Dude, you don't fucking have better shoes. You can't <laughs> afford better shoes. So that's poor to me. If, yeah. if you're making 240, you, you'll still have the kick-ass shoes. You, you, you'll get what you want. You'll get what you need. Why? Because you're not poor. So I want everybody to be that way. Like, what if everybody made that kind of money or better? Wouldn't that be awesome? Would, that, you, we, would we be better off or worse off as an individual? The answer I'm looking for, better. I'm going to give you mine though. Okay, yes, give me yours. better, but, but, what? but if you By the don't, way, when you say but, it means forget everything I just said. I, I, I know. I'm just going to like press, press you for a second. It's like, yeah, that'd be great. But to me, money is a magnifier. So if you don't have your mindset right, and if you don't have your shit together up here and like in here, right? Like brain and heart coherence then all that money could go away anyway. 
And this is what I love about the group of people that you speak to because they're people who are, who have goals and dreams and they're entrepreneurs and right have this mindset. How many people have you heard, Brad, that, you know, have made it to the millions and then fucking lost it all before they got it back. Cause they had to learn a hard lesson. So not yeah, many, the, just FYI. I, mean, yeah, I, ha- the money, I do know some, but not as many as it sounds like people always want to say all millionaires go broke before they're, you know, three times before they stay wealthy. I never, I, I, yeah. I know some that have gone broke and they're still broke. And then I know some that have lost and gained because yeah, of risky, bis- flow, risk, yep. yeah. But, th- but at the end of the day, they're rich. Like I'm talking to rich yeah. people. I don't care that they lost it three times. They're rich. Yeah, <clears throat> totally. Totally. I'm just saying that, yeah, give them, the, give them the money, but also like, just make sure you have your mind right because of course you got that, that. that's going to help you keep it and yeah. scale it. I mean, so. dude, money does not solve everything. Okay. Of course not. It does not solve everything. That is a fact. You can still be miserable and have a shitload of money. So money isn't necessarily, but there's a combination and it's more mindset than anything. Exactly. Like literally if I went broke right now, I would still be happy. Mm-hmm. And you'd know how to build it right but is back that up. weird? I would still be happy. Yeah. I'd still be sitting here with you. I'd just be making different jokes. Why? <laughs> well, well, because I'd, I'd have a different perspective. Like I ain't got no money. Shit, I better <laughs> shut the fuck up. You know, so like they'd just be different, but yeah. I'd still be happy. Yeah. I'd still be heading home to a, a bunch of beautiful girls. I'd still be freaking, you know, breathing and walking around, you know, and to me, that's the biggest win. So once you realize mm-hmm. you already won, you already won. It, it, it takes away that need to freaking. Now, again, a lot of people say, well, I need that to drive me. I don't need it to drive me. What drives me is like a vision. Like, in other words, imagine if everybody was successful. Well, how would that happen? Well, we'd have to get the knowledge from the people who had it, right? The, the successful ones to the people who need it, the mm-hmm. unsuccessful ones. And if you gave the knowledge from the successful ones to the unsuccessful ones, wouldn't we all be successful? And then people say, well, no, because there's people that really don't want exactly. Those are the exceptions. I ain't talking about yeah. them. I'm talking about the normal Joe blows. Cause there's people yeah. out there. They don't know how to make 300 grand a year. Well, I promise you it's in sales. Mm-hmm. It is not in some labor ass job. Mm-hmm. I had a friend of mine. She was getting divorced. I said, what, what do you plan on doing? She said, well, I applied to be a substitute teacher and I, and I'm um, talking to the food and beverage director so I can do cocktails at this place, casino. Mm -hmm. And I said, so you just want to be like average income? And she said, well, no, I don't want to be average income. And I said, well, your plan is going to keep you is to be average income. Like your, your plan as a substitute teacher. Do you not know that substitute teachers don't get very much money? Yep. She's like, yeah, but you know, yeah, but what? Like, don't, why would you go be a substitute teacher if your plan's being rich? So your plan must not be rich. Your plan is being average for a while until you can figure out how to get rich. If that's your plan, just admit that that's your plan. Mm. See what I'm saying? But yeah. I was telling her, like, you don't plan to be average. Like, you know, if you're going to plan, plan to be great. Right. Yep. And then, and then figure out how to get it, which is the easy part, by the way, yeah. how to get it's easy. You find someone who's already got it. Yep. And then you just say, what'd you do? How'd you do that? Or you read about it or you study yeah. them. But at the end of the day, you find someone who's already done it and then you do what they do. That's called do the work. Yeah. And that's why I always say like doing the work is number one, what most people won't do. Black. You know, they'll, oh, hold on. well, yeah. then they really don't want what they said they want. Cause if I just took your kids from you, and you really wanted them back. And I said, you got to do this. And you didn't want to do that, but you wanted your kids. You wouldn't question doing it ever again. You just go ahead and get it done. Nothing would bother you. You know, well, you got to eat freaking nasty food, you know, line it up. Let's go. I need my kids back. And then you wouldn't be halfway through going, Oh, I don't know if I can eat another one of these (laughs) when it comes to your kids, because you're certain. certain. So people need to get certain what they want. That's the hard part. Mm -hmm. And then figure out who did it. Or figure out how to get it by finding someone who's already got it and then do the work. And realize that you can't do it all on your own. There's a team and you got to find the right people that you're going to have around you. To me, it's like it, um, it comes back down. And to by the way, like that's hard too, finding the right team. Of course it is. But when you do, it's gold. Oh, well, that, I would agree with that. Let me know when you do. Did you already? I have. Okay. I'm still putting my team together. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. 
Like anyway, it. maybe I'll, one of these days, do you have a podcast? I do. What's your podcast called? It's The Positive Platform. The Positive Platform? Yep. Where, where do the people find that? Uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Do you cuss? I do. You said I that, do. You said that low. It's, it, it's in the you... explicit, uh, with the explicit little Is it? check mark. How many episodes do you have? I have 52. That's, that's, you're starting to become what's called an actual podcast then. I know. I'm getting close. I'm in the halfway to 100 marks. Pe- so. People say 50 now. Because if you do 50, you're, you got a, a podcast. But yeah. a lot of people, you know, they, they haven't even done any, but they have a podcast. And then you say, how many episodes? Well, we, we're starting next week. Okay, so you're starting yeah. a podcast. You don't have one. No, yeah. You have no, one I've, once you pass 50, they say. I say 100. Yeah. People ask me, hey, will you be on my podcast? I say, I'll tell you what, I'll be your 100th guest. All right, we'll call you back. Never hear from them again. I can't Why? wait to message you quit. once I hit 100. All right, I'll be your 100th guest. Yes. Fair enough? Yes. All right, well, listen, I appreciate you coming in, Amber. Um, appreciate you. If you could tell the Bomb Squad anything, what would you tell them? I would tell them, remember the word proximity. Get in the right room with the right people. Leverage your relationships. Add value first. And always make an impact. Just always make an impact. So okay. it's about... And I would say, and reach out to her if you don't know how. Yes. But until next time, keep it real.